Hello, I'm Philip Taylor from Richmond Green Chambers. I'm talking today about a book concerning barristers. I've entitled the review The Best Barristers Jargon Buster. And it's this book here, Bewigged and Bewildered. It's a guide to becoming a barrister and in England and Wales by Adam Kramer from Hart uh, Publications. It's a very important book because obviously there's a great deal of interest in what we as practicing barristers do. So the question is how do we actually f find out uh, how to get qualified and what is it all about? So this sort of jargon busting guide to modern sort of brothers and sisters in law has obviously a, a great deal of information and has great updates which are of course very useful in a moving profession. It's a much needed book and if anyone's interested in becoming a barrister in the 21st century it's something you must read and have a, a very good idea of. There are plenty of books on the market but this is one of the best. There's always been a certain amount of mystique about what we do at the bar and Mr. Kramer has been able to distill uh, the work we do in a sort of matter-of-fact way, as though he's addressing a jury, and he puts the issues across in a very lively manner, um, and answers as many questions as is possible in, in the circumstances. The ex-chairman of the bar, Stephen Hockman, has actually introduced the book, and he launches into the realities of life at the bar, so that you know what sort of profession you're going into and the type of problems you're going to be facing at the present time. He says, I only wish I'd, uh, that this had been available to me when I started in practice 35 years ago. Well, um, I would echo the points that he makes. Obviously, it's, it's important to identify today that we have many new entrants to the profession who come from outside the profession, if I can put it that way, which means that they need to have some knowledge of the intricacies of the profession and life, which in the past have been gleaned obviously from parents and from relatives. Um, so therefore it's good to show that the bar has got more of a balance about it today. And it shows the broad base, I think, which the bar is now um, going for in terms of attracting people to it. And it's the sort of book which explains all those little things that you uh, need to know, which appear a bit odd to outsiders, but they're part of the traditions of my profession, and otherwise, you know, if we, if, if we didn't have them, we would have got rid of the, the more archaic ones. But there are certain things that are done, and <coughs> By trial and practice, it works. Now, there are 14 chapters in the book. And, in fact, one of the most useful ones is the further information chapter at the back with the glossary and the index. And there's a little timetable for routes to the bar, which is available on the websites and various other places, but it's, it's always useful. Now, probably two of the biggest issues which we're facing at the moment are actually well covered by uh, Mr. Kramer. The first is the aspects of money, not just from uh, paying fees and earnings, but more general aspects. And the other area is, can we do the job? And certainly the view that I feel comes out of this book is that I would like to see more emphasis in future editions on continuous professional development. This is our personal development programs once we've actually been called to the bar and some sort of reflective um, practice about what we do. The online updates which I started off by mentioning are very important because we've got the Legal Services Act which has now come in since this book was actually written and we're obviously assessing the main implications of the Act at the moment. There are going to be uh, more changes clearly on the way. We are a very he heavily regulated profession at the moment and one of the problems people may be put off by is that, that Mr. Kramer produces some statistics which show that the success rates for pupillage 
um, and for tenancies are not good. Now the figures that he gives are a little bit out of date but if I can give you in general terms the idea that we've got about 2,000 people called to the bar each year about 450 pupillages. Obviously the rest of the people concerned are going to have to do other things and that is a problem that hasn't really been addressed uh, by the uh, Bar Council or anybody else for that matter. But it's, it's an issue because obviously once you've got your pupillage and you've undergone all of that you've then got to find a tenancy at the end of it and they are uh, quite difficult to achieve uh, also. Now in addition to all of that, we've got the um, diversity policies which have been um, introduced and to a certain extent there is a reasonable balance. Um, obviously I'm a relatively older person at the bar and I can remember the days where the bar was a predominantly male profession. Things have changed and a very large amount of, of modernisation has taken place. As I indicated, don't be put off by this book. It's a, it's a tough job getting to be a barrister, and it's a tough, jo a tough job maintaining your uh, position. Kramer writes, It will then be for the reader, who knows his or her character and circumstances, to decide whether to seek to become a barrister, because obviously you've got to weigh up the, the pros and the cons. But I think he succeeded in giving an understanding of the process by which a person can, uh, who wants to be a barrister uh, can actually do so. And the numerous changes to the system which have currently been uh, undertaken. Let me just talk about pupillage just for a moment because when I did pupillage the rules were different. Uh, I did a common law um, set um, of uh, two pupillages and it was a general varied practice so I was quite lucky because that's what I actually practice as a barrister. I'm also lucky to have had a drama scholarship as well because I was able to be taught by some very um, well-known actors, uh, good friends, who gave me lots of tips about what to do and what not to do, how to read things and how generally to present and it's been invaluable from that point of view. Um, clearly the rewards, if you are successful at the bar, are, are there to be um, had. Um, obviously, pupillage selection committees are looking for what we call rounded persons, so it's not just people who come from a particular background. Certainly when I was doing the bar course, um, in those days, the view was that it was very useful to have a degree in a non-legal discipline uh, as a, a bachelor's degree because that would give you a much broader base of knowledge but obviously those for, were for people who were entering the profession at a relatively young age whereas for me it was a second career. Um, let me just wind up by saying that the work at the bar is about giving fair representation in many cases to underprivileged people, that's most of us in fact today, and most of them have absolutely no idea what we as guys in wigs actually do but with this book Adam Kramer has given you the knowledge and you do now so as I said it's a great pocket guide it's a good jargon buster because it breaks down some of the information and do get it and good luck with your chosen career thank you very much